Indigenous Voices, a podcast that highlights the perspective of indigenous peoples of the world. Welcome to the first episode of Indigenous Voices, a podcast produced by the FSC Indigenous Foundation. To begin this sounds experience, we will learn more about the context in which indigenous peoples live globally and how the FSC Indigenous Foundation responds to the challenges faced by indigenous peoples around the world. Today, we are joined by Anders Blom of the Sami people from Sweden and chairperson of the FSC Indigenous Foundation Council. Anders has a long working experience in business development, public service, and issues related to indigenous peoples. He has been internationally engaged in the FSC Permanent Indigenous People Committee and chairperson of the FSC Indigenous Foundation. He's founder and senior advisor of the Protect Sami Foundation that aims to support Sami right holders in their dialogue with competing land interests. For example, mining activities, wind mile farms, and he has been a member of the Arctic Economic Council. As a business consultant, Anders has been engaged for the last five years in negotiations between the Swedish state-owned mining company, LKAB, and the Sami right holders. Anders, we are pleased to have you here. Today we would like to know more about the Indigenous Foundation, the role it plays in the world and in the global context of Indigenous peoples. So, as a first question, will you be able to describe the context in which Indigenous peoples live globally, including the Sami in the Arctic? Thank you for that question. Yes, hi, my name is Anders Klum, as you've already heard, and uh, I'm trying to do my best ability to answer to, to the questions in this part. And the first one about the context in which indigenous people live globally. Uh, we, the people of the planet, uh, we live today in a world that is as a crossroad, where one path leads to a changed lifestyle for the world's population, a path that gives hope for a continued, dignified, sustainable, and possible future the other way leads to non-reversible climate emergency that can create an apocalyptic future. The choice should be simple, but the history shows that the simple solutions rarely have the support of the majority. In a world where, where overconsumption has become the yardstick for success, it is difficult to convince that moderation is something positive. In a world where most things has an economic commodity value, it is difficult to convince that everything is not for sale. In a secularized world where spirituality has been banished to nearly abandoned church rooms with few visitors, it is difficult to convince that there are spiritual values filling our surrounding world with the content visible for those who will open their eyes. However, there are light even in this darkness. According to the World Bank, there are approximately 476 million indigenous people worldwide in over 90 countries. They make up over 6% of the global population. Indigenous people manage one quarter of the world's land surface. 80% of the global biodiversity and forests are stocked within indigenous cultural landscape. Landscapes that can demonstrate global solutions to climate change and carbon cycle management. The Sami uh, people in northern Scandinavia in Sápmi, where I come from, are one of the world's indigenous peoples, one of several thousands of indigenous people around the world. Indigenous values are common in most parts of the world. Although there is no single indigenous culture, there are common threats in the tradition of indigenous people of the world. I strongly believe that those indigenous values can assist us in addressing the fundamental social climate and ec ecological issues of our time and directly become our guiding principles. I believe that we must be good stewards of the earth, not simply for ourselves, but for those who will inherit the earth and the results of our decisions. This belief is dominant among most indigenous people in our world. I can hear and feel that among the brothers and sisters in Aotearoa, New Zealand, among the elders in Turtle Island, Canada, and around the fireplaces in Sápmi. We believe being good steward is a principle for survival, and it guides our policies and practices. 
We all share the same belief and respect for Mother Earth. We are all here to be good stewards of Mother Earth and to our indigenous cultural landscapes. This is a landscape where we are not spectators. We are an integrated part of that landscape, and it is mirrored into our, into our self and into our hearts. The Sami poet Nils Aslak Valkapia describes that in his poem, My home is in my heart. All of this is my home. These fjords, rivers, lakes, the cold, the sunlight, the storms, the night and day of the fjells, happiness and sorrow, sisters and brothers. All of this is my home, and I carry it in my heart. Long before contemporary terms like climate change, carbon footprint, green economy and sustainability were in common usage, indigenous peoples believed in living in respectful balance with all life. Prior to engaging in potentially harmful activities, we must consider the long-term effects on the land, the water, the air, the animals and plants, and act accordingly. Indigenous peoples all around the world help protect our environment, fight climate change, and build resilience to natural disasters. Yet, our rights are not always protected. Indigenous peoples possess unlimited knowledge that can help us choose the right path in the crossroad we have in front of us. A prerequisite for this uh, that we, is that we recognize and respect the rights that indigenous people have earned over the millennia. Within FSC, we work with this in, in certified forestry, but not everyone shares our beliefs in this sense. In the threat that the world is uh, facing, we cannot wait for indigenous people's right to be recognized by themselves or for indigenous people's traditional knowledge to automatically end up on the boardroom of the decision-making authorities. Indigenous people themselves must be given the force, the capacity and the instruments to continue to defend their rights and values and thereby be able to be accepted as the role model they are. One might think that indigenous people are homogeneous and a, and a homogeneous ethnic, ethnic group. Uh, this is not true. There is a big difference in the living condition between different indigenous people. The quantitative lifestyle of a Maori uh, with a seat on the company board of its own forest company differs from a member of the Siberian nomadic reindeer herding tribe. The member of the First Nation in Alaska that controls the oil and mineral deposits on its homeland has other quantitative distinctive conditions compared to the tribal representative in the Amazon who is fighting a state-sponsored devastation of the primeval forest. What they have in common are qualitative aspects in the interpretation of, of what is our place on Earth. So I think that is the answer of, the, of your first question. Anders, thank you so much for that answer. I think it's very important to hear you. I also take something that you say that is simple solutions have really had the support of the majority of people. And I think that is true and it applies today. And also uh, the fight that has always been there for the rights of indigenous peoples. And also you have said something about the FSC Indigenous Foundation that it will link to the second question that we have here. Uh, that is, what is the FSC Indigenous Foundation? How was the initiative created? And how does it respond to the challenges faced by indigenous peoples around the world? Yes, thank you for that question. Uh, the FSC Indigenous Foundation is a unique creation in the international indigenous world. Uh, it is the result of a long process within FSC International. As early as in 2011, at one of the FSC's general assemblies, an anonymous FSC decided to establish a permanent advisory committee to the FSC International Executive Board, the Permanent Indigenous Peoples Committee, abbreviated to PIPC. Since its inception, this committee has consisted of, of indigenous people, representatives from all over the world, with the aim of guiding the FSC's International Board in all matters concerning indigenous people within the FSC organization and regulations. After a few years, we who worked within PIPC, I was one of them, realized that we needed an operational unit to be able to perform our work better. This raised the idea of forming a foundation that would and could work in a more proactive way with indigenous issues within the FSC and in the global certified forestry. Fortunately, the FSC was supportive of this idea, and after a lot of preparatory work and negotiations, we formed the FSC Indigenous Foundation. 
for those of us who represented indigenous people, it was very important that the, the foundation should be based on a set of values taken from the indigenous world. This can be described in many ways, but uh, many indigenous people share a view that implies do not take more than you need from the land to survive. If you take too much, your greed will increase. Treat all life with respect and abundance will return to you. Show gratitude for whatever you receive from life and life will return its blessings. Give back to the earth by returning her love and making offerings and the earth will continue to sustain you. In addition to, to those values, it was important that FSCIF was led by indigenous people on both the board level and on the operational management level. We have succeeded in this and uh, the FS Indigenous Foundation is now a business led by indigenous people for the benefit of indigenous people. Within uh, the FS Indigenous Foundation, we believe that indigenous people must be given the capacity to defend their self-determination and their own rights, the capacity to develop their own organizations toward better goal fulfillment, and we have the ambition to support economic development where sustainable management of Mother Earth can also lead to good indigenous companies. Our vision within the FSC Indigenous Foundation is that the global value of indigenous people and their right livelihoods, ecosystem services and natural capital and territories are recognized and incorporated into forest governance and market systems. We are now building up our organization so it can deliver according to our vision we have just started, but we will not stop working until we have reached our goals. Thank you, Anders. You have mentioned some problems that communities and indigenous peoples are going through. But regarding climate change, I would also like to ask you a question. What recommendations will you give to donors, investors and companies who want to face climate change in coordination with indigenous peoples? Thank you for that question. Well, today there are many international philanthropists and donors who express that they want to support indigenous people in the work of fighting climate change. Often, however, this is the confession of the lips, uh, which often results in nothing. To change this, there is a number of fundamental obstacles that must be overcome. I can be, it, it can be said that a paradigm shift is required in the relationship between indigenous and non-indigenous people. There are many obstacles facing a, a paradigm shift in which indigenous people are protagonists, but I will here narrow that down to two obstacles, and I, I have already mentioned them, but I think it's important to, to, to mention them again. The first obstacle to paradigm shift concerns indigenous people's right to self-determination. If we do not respect indigenous people's right, there is also a great risk that we will destroy the world's opportunity to choose the right path for the future. Indigenous people must always have the right to give their free, prior and informed consent to initiatives that endanger our common future. The second challenge or obstacle concerns the exploitation of the Earth's assets. There is a constant search for raw materials and resources around us, and we experience today the green colonialism. In an economy based on hubris by the world's decision makers, large areas where indigenous people live are exploited for mining, for forestry, for farming, for energy production. While I have been talking, an area equivalent to 200 football fields of rainforest has disappeared through clear felling. Before or in parallel with discussion, uh, donations or investments, one must acknowledge and work with the two obstacles I just mentioned. If you do not create the conditions for recognizing the rights of indigenous people, and if you are not willing to work to limit and change the current direction of the consumer society with the exploitation of Mother Earth that, that this entails, then I'm afraid that no money in the world will save the world from a long-term collapse. It is now that we choose the road for our future. We are all responsible for that choose, choice of road. Within the Indigenous Foundation, we will take our responsibilities and we will work hard in order to make new models for the future. I hope others will support us. Thanks. Thank you, Anders. I think it's very important what you're saying about the fight of Indigenous peoples, because they are not only fighting for their rights, their fight is also for nature. 
If we want to fight against climate change, we must take an action, not only to talk about it. In the same sense, we want to ask you, how can we implement the COP26 pledge of 1.7 billion with effective participation and leadership of indigenous peoples? Yeah, that's a tricky uh, question. And, but the, the answer to this question is closely related to what I mentioned earlier, the recognition of rights and respect for cultural landscapes in which indigenous people live their lives. However, the issue also has an organizational aspect. In order to be able to handle the type of investment mentioned in COP26, it is necessary that indigenous organizations are developed to have a professional focus on their organizations with clear competences that can handle large investments under safe and transparent conditions. There are a number of such. The FSC Indigenous Foundation is one. To this day, indigenous people have often been declared incompetent by their surrounding world. This has also created the conditions for a number of NGOs on governmental organizations that have acted as agents for indigenous people, sometimes with good intentions, sometimes with opposite. This is not acceptable for the future. We, who represent professional indigenous organizations, may have to be a little self-critical in the sense that we have not marketed our ability to handle complex situations and extensive investment support well enough. Here we can get better. Another aspect of the mentioned COP investment is that these have often been framed as agreement of intent uh, without being linked to concrete implementation measures. Uh, at the forthcoming COP meeting in Egypt, I believe that it will be necessary to show that these billions are not pretend money in a monopoly game and that these funds must have mechanisms for how the investment can become real. FSC and Danish Foundation can assist in this development. Anders, thank you so much for your answer. I think that it's important, love, like you're saying, to recognize the value of the voice and work of indigenous peoples that has always been there. And now that we have financial support, we need to take action and also hear the people. What are the problems that they're facing and also the fight for their rights? Finally, What message will you give to the indigenous peoples and communities that are listening to you? Yeah, there are many questions or, or many me messages that I would like to ask the, the listeners in different uh, indigenous communities. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the, the main issue is, of, of course, how can convince the surrounding world to, to listen to our, our message? Uh, but... Uh, I think I will end this pod, uh, pod again with a poem from the great Sami poet Nils Aslak Valkyapé, who says that my home is in my heart, it migrates with me. You know it, brother, you understand it, sister. But what do I say to strangers who spread out everywhere? How shall I answer the questions that come from a different world? Thank you. Thank you. That is very a very beautiful poem and really give me chills right now. But thank you very much, Anders, for sharing with us these few minutes. And to get us closer, a closer approach to the work of the FSC Indigenous Foundation. Thank you so much. We invite you to listen to the next episode of Indigenous Voices, a podcast that highlights the perspective of indigenous peoples worldwide. Don't miss our next episode. Learn more about the FSC Indigenous Foundation and its work with indigenous peoples around the world through the website www.fscindigenousfoundation.org and its social networks, FSC Indigenous Foundation, in Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.